Hello everyone and welcome to a very special video. Today we're bringing you full coverage of the Apex Online Racing F1 2013 Season 8 PC Split 1. And of course I'm Justin and I'm joined by Miko. Hey guys. So for all of you who haven't heard the news already, Miko and I will not be racing this season in AOR, but instead we'll be bringing you extensive coverage of the Split 1 League all season long. And of course we're going to be kicking things off as always in Melbourne for the first round of this eighth season. Yeah, and of course there was no race in Australia last year because of the delayed start of the season 7, so this will be the first time the boys of the PC Split 1 will be competing in an official race at this track in F1 2013. So, back to Justin for the qualifying comparison. Thank you so much. Yep, so it's going to be an exciting one here. Um, we're going to be seeing Alex Gillen in the Ferrari going up against Kiefla in the McLaren. So everyone, welcome to the first qualifying side-by-side -side comparison of the season. As you can see, it's raining very hard and the full wet tires are the compound of the day. As we see Alex Gillen on, in the Ferrari on the right going up against Kiefla in the McLaren on the left-hand side. Already it's very obvious that Kiefla is running much shorter gears than Alex as he's bouncing off the limiter while Alex is barely making it into seventh. Both cars are neck and neck as they go through turn three, breaking at about the 100 meter board and feeding the car nicely through turns three and four with Alex using a bit more of the track as he's all over the curbs while Kiefla is all over the curves using about 15% of his curves at the exit of turn four. At the end of the first split, we can see already that Kiefla is up on the champion by the slightest of margins. Kiefla staying in third gear for turns six and seven, while Alex's longer gears are forcing him one gear lower. Approaching turn nine, and both drivers nail the braking point and manage to avoid the grass on both sides of the exit and accelerate nicely toward the high-speed turns 11 and 12 and using a bit of curves to help them get there. And now for my personal favorite part of the lap, turns 11 and 12, both drivers dropping down to fifth gear in these wet conditions, but Kiefla getting a better exit as Alex, fi uh, Alex fights the car over the curb. And we can see Alex has managed to maintain the gap through Sector 2 and actually has more curves available to him at the end of the lap. Uh, going through turn 13, we can see Alex breaking much later at about the 50 meter board while Kiefel was at about the 100 meter board. But Alex runs a little bit wide going through turn 14 and uh, that's going to help Kiefel ever so slightly as they go through the, sl the slowest corner on the track at, at turn 15. And then both drivers short shifting through the final corner, just trying to get, get the best possible run towards the finish line. And Kiefel gets a 129.4 with Alex getting a 129.6. Indeed, so it is Kiefla on pole for the first round of Season 8 with a time of 1 minute 29.416 with newcomer Umur Boyasi completing the first row of the grid with a great performance. Season 7 champion Alex Gillen manages a third, third place closely followed by Furkan Ozjan and the Red Bulls of Fat First and Jack First. Gesto Rivero starts at 7th place followed by my countryman Granu in the Mercedes. Completing the top 10 are newcomers Mini Black and F1 DJ, closely followed by Klawutski and Kramer. Amazingly, the top 12 separated by less than 8 tenths. Aerial veteran Christian Nenov starts at 13th place, followed by Cem Bologbasi in the Mercedes. Completing the grid is Isa Musing in the Ferrari. And it is race time. Welcome one and all to the Australian Ga Grand Prix with the top 12 drivers separated by less than 8 tenths as Miko said in qualifying. It's sure to be an exciting race as we wait on the grid for the lights. There is a 26% chance of rain for this race, which means uh, at least 7 of the 29 laps here today should be run in mixed or wet conditions. Uh, Alex Gillen is playing the role of the Jesus fish here, swimming against the tide as he starts the race on the prime tires, along with his teammate Eyes Amusing and Mini Black in the Sauber. So we have five lights and they're away, and we are off and racing, and Alex of course getting a little bit of a poor start starting on those prime tires, uh, with Boya uh, Boyasi up ahead uh, already gaining time on him, and actually he's got a couple of cars going up his inside at turn one. Uh, Furkan Ajan, and it looks like Fat First, uh, yeah, no Jack First in the Red Bull, and it looks like they're going to be going three wide into turn three here and Jack first breaks very late and sticks to the inside and he looks like he ran a little bit wide and maybe kind of pushed Furkan ever so slightly which uh, caused Alex to suffer um, it, he really seems to be having a, a tough go of things at the start of this race on those prime tires 
Yeah, and uh, I think Gaston Rivero and Fat first lit by as well. So let's, ta let's take a look at the start from the back here from uh, Alex Gillen's teammate, Isaac Musing. Uh, getting a decent start uh, going side by side to the first corner with Jem and a little bit of contact with Christian Nino there from Kramer. Using all of his curves and landing with the pass from Jem and then just completely Ooh. missing his braking point. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Heavy fuel, missing the braking point, cold tires, prime tires. Yeah, that's uh, definitely not the way to take uh, turn three there, but uh, I think he was very apologetic <laughs> at the time when it <laughs> happened. <laughs> Certainly was not intentional. Not a great way to start uh, his season eight um, as uh, Alex Gillen's teammate, certainly. But again, uh, on the cold prime tires with the heavy fuel um, and with all that dirty air ahead of him as well, you know, it's pretty pretty easy to understand. I think we've, we've all been there. Uh, so back on board a little bit farther up the road, uh, on board now uh, with Alex. And it looks like he's actually fighting back at first. Can Ajan. He's got the inside line for turn 11 and the, now the outside line for turn 12 and he's actually managed to get by on those prime tires so Alex Gillen is not wasting any time in fighting back and trying to gain back those positions after dropping all the way down to P7 uh, at the start of the race and uh, Klawitski on the option tires as most drivers are on the option tires is actually uh, fighting back at Alex. Uh, he managed to get by Furkan as well who seems to be struggling a little bit on, these, on this opening lap. Alex is going to have the inside line for the final corner here. He's going to get a nice uh, run out of the corner. He's going to put it up into Rich Mix, uh, but he's got Klawitzki uh, just behind uh, in that cater room getting a very nice slipstream. And you can see Alex is just barely getting into seventh gear at the end of this straight, especially without DRS. Uh, of course, no DRS during the qualifying, so that's part of the reason uh, he was struggling to hit top speed. Uh, but that means he's going to be uh, very difficult to defend against uh, when he gets a DRS behind a car. And it looks like we got a car off. Was that was that Krama, I believe, who, who had a little bit of an off there? Uh, let's see. I think he's still in 11th if you look at the timing. Yeah. Actually, uh, now I'm sure. thinking it might have been. I think it. I think it may have been a uh, Mercedes. That may have possibly been Gem. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure, but we ha we had a car off there, uh, and we got some side by side battling uh, behind Christian here. We're on board with Christian Nenov at the moment, who is a very fast driver. Uh, took a little bit of a break from AOR for a little while, and uh, he's back now racing in split one immediately. Uh, of course, all these drivers are very quick. Uh, you, you can't get into split one without being quick. And up ahead, we got Klawitzki and Granu. Granu defending from Klawitzki. Uh, both both drivers on the option tires at the moment. Christian draining his curves, actually, and he's going up the uh, inside of his teammate Klawitzki. And uh, it looked like he was going to maybe have a peek at Granu, but Granu being a little defensive, running a little wide, though, there at turn 13. And uh, Klawitzki actually taking that place back as he gets a better exit out of turn 13 there. Um, so already lots of action happening here. Oh, as we get some very close battling behind. And, yep, I do see Jem in the rearview mirror there. So I think that was Jem that had that off. Uh, oh, it looks like we got a spinner in the background as well. Yeah, a lot uh, of so overs there at least. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so uh, I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if they spun entirely, but certainly they they, they were sliding, if nothing else. Uh, but Christian uh, having to kind of slot in behind his teammate in the other caterham here, as uh, he's doing some very late braking. Wow. That is a dive bomb from Christian Nenov. Uh, at turn three there on his teammate, very impressive stuff. And uh, we're on board now with Krama uh, at the at the back of the queue uh, in 15th, just behind his teammate Mini Black, uh, who is just behind the other Ferrari of Eyes Amusing. And uh, currently uh, ending sector one of lap three. So DRS has been activated. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna probably be seeing some passing here as we actually see uh, Krama go, just go flying by Mini Black, I think. Uh, Mini is just uh, conceding that position to his teammate who he believes is probably uh, a little bit faster at the moment or maybe just faster with this track in general. So uh, Krama moves up a position into 14th and it looks like he's uh, lining up eyes amusing now to take P13. Yeah, no, good to see. I think Krama and Mini Black are both from Denmark, so uh, a, uh, a bit unusual actually to see two teammates from the same nationality. So. Yeah, uh, Alex and Eyes Amusing though is uh, is another example of that. Uh, Alex not traditionally taking uh, uh, British teammates or anything like that. He doesn't seem like he favors them or anything, but uh, just sort of how how it went this year. And uh, Kramer's got DRS on Eyes Amusing, and he's gonna use that to good effect and uh, go flying by. And of course, there's only one DRS detection point, but two DRS activation points. So he will get DRS once again after he's already completed the pass. Yeah. 
completely flying by and uh, well, and then immediately I mean, going wide at turn wide, three yeah. and uh, loses the position not just to Isaac Musing but to his teammate Mini Black uh, who just conceded that position the lap before. Uh, so that's a little bit of an awkward moment for the Sauber boys there. It's like, hey, didn't I let you by? Um, <laughs> back on board now, or uh, moving on board now with F1 DJ, as I have decided to call him. And uh, he's currently running in P10, and he's got a little bit of a gap ahead to Klawitzki. I think he's just about in DRS range. If he can, uh, yeah, he's just about under nine tenths behind the German in the Caterham and uh, F1 DJ in the, in the Force India. And uh, just behind, he's got Jem Bullock Bassi in the Mercedes. And it looks like he's definitely within DRS range as well. Uh, lap four now, and I don't think we're going to be seeing any pitting just yet. Um, the tires aren't that bad, especially because of the wet qualifying. It means that everybody's option tires were brand new for the start of this race. So uh, I don't expect anyone to be pitting on lap four. As we see Alex having to defend on the prime tires against Furkan Ajan. And uh, this is surprising, actually. Alex seemed to have the, the pace on Furkan earlier in the race. And, and now Furkan seems to be making a fight back as he's uh, going to have the outside line, the racing line. And actually, he gives Alex lots of room through turn three there. Very respectful driving from Furkan and it, as he completes that pass. Uh, but you, you'd expect lap five, uh, Alex would be the faster driver and Furkan would be the slower driver because of the super softs just going off so much quicker. I wonder if... Uh Furkan's pace just if, if it's just going down from this um this lap or not so I think uh, uh, Alec just got a really sloppy exit from turn one and just compromised his uh, turn two and the run up to turn three so we'll maybe see a repassing <laughs> from Alex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, as we do get uh, this wonderful graphic from Alex here as you can you can see how much brake and throttle uh, he's using. Uh, you'll notice other people in the league uh, are doing that as well. Christian Nenov is, is another person. Um, and it's wonderful to see as Alex has a little trip into the gravel. Uh, not too much time lost. It looks like he, uh, they, the DRS detection point was already before that corner, so that shouldn't affect his ability to get DRS. As we see, Christian Nenov is going to be pitting at the end of lap five here. So Christian Nenov uh, having a very early pit stop. Uh, I wonder if we're going to be seeing any other people pitting on lap five. This is definitely the start of, of the pit window. Um, I expect most people will be pitting, uh, those of the drivers who are on the super softs will be pitting on laps five, six, and seven. Yeah, and uh, depending, uh, we got that uh, weather coming, so I think it was 26% chance of rain. Sure was. So, so going on the primes would be the wiser choice at this point but uh, no no di no dark clouds inside at this moment yeah very sunny clear skies uh really doesn't look like any threat of rain so uh it's it's uh it's almost mo more ominous because <laughs> because it just looks so it's so nice outside uh we're on board with Keepla at the moment uh and we're rounding out uh starting sector three of lap six and he's already got a very comfortable gap in first place there, uh, really nobody uh, challenging him from behind. As uh, Jack First is under attack from Gaston Rivero at the moment, they're going to be going side by side as Eyes Amusing and Mini Black are also going side by side. And yeah, really and slowly through that corner. Absolutely, and uh, M Mini Black goes a little bit wide, and Jack First takes the inside line for that third to last corner there, turn 14, and takes that position. And I'm, I'm not sure, has Jack First pit already? He must have been, yeah, because he's yeah, he did. behind these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah he definitely did. And uh, we got a car coming out of the pits as uh, as Jack First is going side by side with Eyes Amusing. And for a moment there, we were three wide entering turn one. And uh, Jack First does a great job of uh, navigating both those cars and uh, and not getting held up too much by, by those of the, the cars that hadn't pit yet. Uh, back on board with Christian Nenov here as he's uh, getting by Jem Bullock Bossy. And uh, actually, no, they're side by side through oh, turn that's, one. That, that's Grano. Is it Granu? Yeah, it, it sure is, is. Granu. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. You're all right. I apologize. Uh, yeah, so he's going side by side with Granu there uh, through turn one, but uh, manages to, to hold on and take that or hang on to that position. Uh, back on board with Kifla, who has uh, pit for the prime tires now. Currently running in fourth place, but he's in a net P1 at the moment um, with uh, Boyasi uh, behind. He is in a net P2. So uh, this is for position, this battle between Kifla and Boyasi. Uh, on lap seven with these fresh prime tires. Yeah, and, uh, 
just a little r remark about uh, Kifla's driving style. It's pretty pretty unusual actually. He brakes pretty early and then just carries a lot of speed through corners and gets still gets a great exit. So clearly working out for him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's really impressive stuff, actually. I mean, you could you could really see the difference in the qualifying comparison, um, specifically turn 13. Uh, if any of you guys are interested in, in going back and looking at that, you could see uh, Kifla breaking at about the 100 meter board and Alex at about the 50 meter board, which is a huge difference for these cars. I mean, you know, it, it should be a handful of meters uh, here and there, uh, depending on braking. And up ahead, we got Gaston and Isa Musing uh, in a side by side battle. Oh, and it, it looks like it's uh, Hampered Fat First who has pit all ready for his prime tires uh, so he is a pit stop ahead of these drivers at the moment and uh, it looks like Gaston has managed to hang on to that position ahead of Eyes Amusing and uh, it looks like Fat First has actually got Mini Black coming up behind him now he's practically pushing Eyes Amusing through the final corner <laughs> as he gets DRS and drains his curves and completes that pass moving himself up into P6 uh, piece and uh, just behind uh, just behind the Force India there and uh, b dropping back just a little bit to Eyes Amusing and it looks like he's going to be doing his first pit stop at the end of this lap or at least that's the plan for his crew is he's going to be pitting at the end of lap 8 here. Uh, Eyes Amusing and Mini Black and Alex Gillen again just to remind you guys were the only people who started on the prime tires so all three of those guys should still be running. I know for a fact the other Ferrari of Alex Gillen is still out on track um, and I do believe Mini, yeah, Mini Black is as well he's just behind Eyes Amusing actually and uh, as he's doing uh, a nice a nice sector, he did a uh, half second up on his previous lap as we're behind Christian now, who is behind Mini Black at the moment. Um, and he has pit already. Let's see, uh, Christian pit on lap five along with uh, Krama and Jack first. Uh, so they're, they're on a little bit older prime tires are Christian and, and the others who pit on lap five versus the likes of uh, Fat first. And Furkan Ajan, uh, they they pit a little bit later um, than these Neo guys. Still, I think maybe three or four laps old, so not yeah. not old in any case. Probably won't be seeing a difference just yet, but uh, certainly later on in this stint, that could make a little bit of a difference. As we see, Eyes Amusing is going to make his first pit stop uh, from P7. And on the prime tires, I imagine he's probably going to be going on the primes again with a chance uh, with a chance of rain like that. Uh, I'm, I gotta imagine that the prime runners are hoping to do one less stop uh, than the people who started on the option tires. Yeah, and uh, it kind of makes sense to get the get the option tires out of the way in a sense, even if there is rain, uh, because the track just oh as. Rainer just completely misses a breaking point and just... Just right off the track. Right off the track, yeah. I don't know what, what's going on with Rainer, but... Uh, as I was saying, it's it's good to get those option tires out of the way because the track is still pretty green at this point. Yeah. And the primes work better later in the race because the yeah. rubber gets uh, laid into the road. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, back on board with F1 DJ at the moment, who's running in P9 currently, and he's uh, just a couple places behind Christian Nenov, who we jump on board with now, who is defending against Furkan Ajin, as he have, has a very exciting exit to his turn 12 there. That's going to put Furkan alongside him, and Christian is defensive, holding the inside line, uh, but Furkan carries a nice amount of speed. He, he looked like he got a little bit onto the curb there, and now both of their lines are compromised through turn 14 there, and Furkan eventually does take that position at turn 15. Um, but um, uh, or actually, it, does he get DRS? Nope. Uh, Christian is the one that gets the DRS. Actually, so he's going to be passing him right back as he goes to the outside. As Furkan just kind of puts it in the middle of the road and forces Christian to decide. Oh, as oh. Christian has gone very wide at turn one, and that's going to let Furkan right back by, and that's going to let F1 DJ uh, by as well in the Force India, or at least it's going to put him uh, side by side. They're going to be going side by side into turn three. Lots of respect, taking lots of exit curb, and job done. Very well impressive done. move. Very nice move from F1 DJ there to get by Christian Nenov, uh, who is no slouch at all. Uh, very quick driver. Uh, so uh, very nice job from F1 DJ, though, to take advantage of that mistake from Christian Nenov and move himself up into P8 now. He's, he's getting into some nice points play paying positions. Yeah, and his first race, no less, so good job from him. And... Uh, we can see a little bit of the same driving style from F1 DJ here. Breaking pretty early and still carrying a lot of speed through the turns. But that also means that you're probably gonna go 
pretty wide on the exits of the uh, corners, so that's gonna be that's gonna work at this track, but not necessarily every track. Right. As we see, uh, Alex pitting from P1, uh, certainly not a net P1. He's, he's definitely going to lose at least a few positions as Kiefla's already gone by. Here comes Boyasi, and here comes Jack first as well, at least, if not a couple more drivers. Um, Alex ma managing, though, to eke those tires out all the way to the end of lap 10. Um, so if anybody's going to be able to do two stops before the rain comes, I, I think it's going to be Alex here, as his teammate had to pit as early as lap 8. Uh, so he, uh, Alex is, is looking like uh, in the best position right now uh, to try and to try and make this a, uh, a two-stop race as far as the dry tires are concerned, um, and he may he may even be able to avoid the option tires entirely and save himself an extra pit stop. Um, but he did drop down quite a bit as a result of that pit stop. He's all the way down in P9 at the moment. Those couple of last last laps on the worn worn prime tires are clearly hurting him. Uh, or at least if you look at the, his track position. So let's see. Let, let's see if he can make any progress through the field. Yeah, absolutely. He should definitely be able to make some progress on on the cars it, just ahead of him here in seventh and eighth. Christian and F1 DJ as they're going side by side. Looks like Christian is going to try the outside of turn eleven. This is a very brave move, and he wow, he nails it. He absolutely nails it. That was an inspired pass by Christian Nenov there at the outside really of turn 11, inside turn 12, uh, and very, very impressive driving from F1 DJ as well as he manages to go uh, practically side by side with Christian through uh, two of the toughest corners to go side by side through in this track and uh, has no problems doing it whatsoever. Uh, really impressive stuff from F1 DJ here. Um, he's, st he's still in eighth place after Alex Gillen's pit. Uh, that moved him up to seventh, but he's been relegated now to, to eighth. Uh, but he's going to have DRS now on Christian Nenov, and look at the gains on him. I mean, he came from he a mile a back. He had like 75% curse. <laughs> oh, really? Left uh, I That's straight, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, I, I missed that. Didn't get past, though. Yeah, that, that was really impressive, though. I mean, he nearly pulled alongside Christian and almost forced him to go side-by-side -side through turn one. Um, and it looked like he was maybe going to be able to go side-by-side -side after turn two for turn three, but uh, Christian uh, was having none of that and holds on to the position in the meantime. Uh, but certainly uh, something tells me that this fight is definitely not over because Christian really doesn't seem to be pulling away at the sort of speed that he would probably like. Um, and it looks like uh, F1 DJ is probably going to be making an attempt back as we move back a position on board with Alex now. We're going to get a great view of this battle between F1 DJ and Christian Nenov. Um, I imagine, though, Alex isn't going to want to be seeing this battle for too long as he's going to be looking to get by both of these drivers. Yeah, exactly. And uh, for me, it looked like as <laughs> Alex just completely nails that corner. Wow, that's <laughs> wow. Unbe unbe <laughs> unbelievable. But uh, it's, it's looking like, I think, F1D just has playing it a little bit safe at this point, not wanting to crash the season six uh, veteran of Christian Ninov off the track as Alex goes out around the outside of the <laughs> penultimate <laughs> corner. Clearly having the pace on the other wow. guys. Wow. Oh, yeah, and F1 DJ looks like had a little bit of a moment, had some oversteer possibly at the exit of the final corner there. And, and it, yeah, he's lost the position to Klawutski in the in the caterham, uh, teammate to, to Christian there. Uh, so both caterhams are actually managing to, to do pretty well uh, as we kind of hit the midpoint of this race um, after they were maybe struggling a little bit in the opening laps, but they, they seem to be in good form now. They're getting into the swing of things. Uh, they're... they're smooth but yeah uh, back to F1 DJ you're right I, th I think he is being a little bit overcautious uh, certainly I, I can relate to that season six in Australia I was exceptionally cautious for my first season um, you know you, you really don't want to it's, it's your first impression you really don't want to get anybody on your bad side or, or you don't want to get on anybody's bad side on that first race or anything like that so um, he's definitely shown impressive uh, speed but uh, yeah the, the aggressiveness could maybe come up a little bit um, and with without being too offensive to anybody or anything anything like that um, as Alex is right behind Christian Nenov in the in that dirty air going through 11 and 12 and actually I mean he's just got so much mechanical grip from those from those fresh prime tires that he, he manages to stick right with him in spite of that of that uh, uh, dirty air and uh, rounding out lap 13 here it looks like he's setting him up for a pass yeah Christian having maybe 15% of curse left and Alex has I think oh yeah, gosh maybe 90% <laughs> so this is gonna be a straightforward pass I think 
Yep, absolutely. Before turn one, even I think he's even gonna get. Yeah, he's he, he pulled all the way past him, and he's just gonna be able to take the actual racing line through turn one. Because Alex moves himself up into P5, and uh, he's gonna just. Wow, actually, Christian's sticking with him pretty well uh, mm -hmm. as Alex has the DRS there. I, I gotta imagine Christian using a little bit of Kurs uh, to maybe try and try and stick with the Season 7 champion. As we uh, move back to Eyes of Musing, as he's finishing lap 13, he's got Mini Black just behind, and uh, he's going to the right, but then they, they both see that there's a Force India at the pit exit, and uh, I believe, was that F1 DJ? I think it was. Yeah, this must have been, yeah, uh, they're going yep, still, yeah, still side by side. <laughs> and Mini Black's got the inside line. It looks like he pulled ahead, actually, and uh, he even moved a little bit to the... Oh, no! There's a little, a little bit, bit of, contact of contact between the two of them. And uh, looks like Eyes of Musing is just going to take that position right back with the inside line at turn six. Or five, excuse me. Yeah, going on the, on the, on the outside of turn four. That's a pretty unusual place to overtake, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this yeah, is very sure. interesting. Uh, F1 DJ actually on the option tires at the moment. Now, uh, actually, did he start on the primes as well? I'm wondering now. I'm going to see if I can find out. Uh, you go ahead. You cover this. I'm going to see what I can find out about his pits. <laughs> yeah, F1 DJ going side by side with Minik Black once again and following closely behind Eyes Musing as well with Granu actually behind them. So he must be having a terrible race at this point. And yep. not finding a way past with even with those option tires, so a little bit over over cautious, as we said. He gets earlier. a little little corner cutting warning there. Yeah, let's see if he can manage to pass here. He's going to be side by side with him. Open, yeah. Turn one, and it uh, looks like Mini Black actually braked a little bit later than F1 DJ did. Uh, I gotta be honest though, I'm not sure where those option tires came from from F1 DJ. I don't know when he put those on. Uh, they're certainly up to temperature, as we can tell on the right side there. Um, as he's got Granu just behind now, he's, he's trying to find a way past the prime runner of Mini Black, and now he's got Granu just behind hounding him. So uh, he's trying to balance his, his uh, driving here as a mixture between defending and attacking, which is, which is never what you want. Uh, I mean, he, he's in a very vulnerable position right now. He really needs to just get by Mini Black right now. As Mini Black, though, stays defensive to the inside, he's going to dive oh. up the inside, and he breaks way too late, and that's going to send him into the gravel and that's going to let Mini Black and Granu by and Krama and that's going to drop him down to dead last. That is really unfortunate. Yeah, that, that was a really, really me messy sector. Just trying to get past but still a little bit maybe uh, too cautious and just what he really needs is a commitment to the inside of a corner and just going for oh. it. And now just going really wide. Yeah, as just his bad lap gets worse. Yeah, as you can see, actually in the temperature monitor, you can see that. Oh, and a lot of oversteer coming out of the last corner. And yeah, that's the gravel on the tires. Yeah, that is really, really unfortunate. I think it was up to P8 at some point. Uh, P7 for a little yeah. bit. And now at the back of the grid, so. Yep, not going now just great. stone cold last, yeah. And uh, Mini Black as well uh, lost a couple of positions, both uh, his teammate Krama and Granu actually, uh, in all that insanity with uh, with F1 DJ. Uh, Mini Black as well managing to, to lose some positions. We're on board with Krama at the moment, who is just behind Granu. And uh, it's lap 16, so we're past the halfway point of the race. And that's eyes amusing, just up the road ahead of Granu. Not many yeah. battles going on in the front, so we're just gonna stick around with these guys in the midfield. Yeah, up at the front, it's definitely a little bit more spread out. Uh, as, as the Xbox boys would say, we got a five-way horse here for uh, for P11, it looks like. And Granny's gonna take the inside line on Eyes Amusing. Wow, and look at that speed difference. And he's, he's already made the pass, com completed, and Granu running a little bit onto the grass there, but managing to, s to stay on the road, and he's going to hang on to that position. And uh, he's just outside the points now in P11. Uh, there's a big gap up ahead to, to the car in 10th, uh, so he's got lots of work ahead of him, as Eyes Amusing is going to dive into the pits for uh, stop number two for him here at the end of lap 16. 
Uh, moving on board with Klawitzki on lap 17. Yeah, he, he's uh, about a half lap ahead in P5 at the moment. And he's got Jack First, his fellow countryman, the German of Jack First, just behind in the Red Bull. And it looks like uh, Jack First is within DRS range, certainly. Yeah, he's, he's less than nine tenths behind Klawitzki. And uh, he's got a better exit out of turn uh, 9 and 10 there, and he's using a lot of curves. He's going to be along the outside for turn 11, and that's it. Job done. He doesn't even have to go side by side with him, and then just nails that 11-12 complex there, and uh, he's just going to sail on by. Very nice move from Jack first there. Uh, back on board with F1 DJ, who has managed to get a couple of those positions back on these option tires, uh, and he's nicely, he's got a nice view of Krama and Granu now, uh, who are going to be going not quite side by side as Granu just barely edges out uh, Krama going into turn 11 there, and uh, going to go defensive. Oh, a lot of weaving going on here. Uh, F1 DJ really not sure what to do, and I don't blame him because that, that's a confusing situation. It's hard to tell who's doing what and who's going where, and uh, boy, this guy just needs a break. <laughs> <laughs> he needs he needs to just get by someone as he actually touches the grass ever so slightly going through the penultimate corner and then feeds it back to the far left to try and get a nice exit through this final corner, avoid any over, oversteer like he's been getting in previous laps. He's got the DRS and he had a little bit of curves as well, but of course kramer has got DRS up ahead uh, because of Granu and uh, F1 DJ just can't make any sort of inroads on the Sauber up ahead. And this is exactly what you don't want with these option tires. You want <laughs> clean, clean air in front of you and just just trying to get those best laps out of these tires, but this is just absolutely hurting him in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, This is uh, really hurting any chance he has of uh, getting those points paying positions back. Uh, certainly he's, you know, he's, he's not too far off. I mean, he, it's, it's not all said and done, uh, but every minute that he spends behind these prime run runners, it's just getting worse and worse. And as we can see from the tire indicator now, he's actually got worse tires than the prime runners are, uh, around him. Uh, so it, exactly as you said, all this battling and dirty air and everything like that has just uh, really destroyed F1 DJ's uh, option stint, unfortunately. So we're going to move on board with Alex Gillen, who is just behind Furkan Ajian as Furkan dives into the pits uh, in the McLaren at the end of lap 18. Alex is going to get DRS and a nice use of curves and some nice fresh air uh, for him to try and put in some nice uh, quick laps. And Keepla is just coming out of the pits right now. There's Alex. And, yeah, and he's going to slot in behind Alex and just ahead of Boyasi behind. Boyasi really sticking with Kifla really well. He hasn't he hasn't challenged Kifla uh, so much. They, it's not like they've been going side by side through any corners, but he is just right there with him. Uh, whatever Kifla does, he just really can't seem to pull out a, health, a healthy enough gap for uh, Boyasi. And, and the gap has kind of grown and shrunk and grown and shrunk. Uh, but as we can see here on lap 18 with Kifla on these cold tires, uh, Boyasi is actually just behind and within DRS range. And let's see what Kifla can do once he get these uh, tires warmed up. A little bit of corner cut there, but nothing major. And probably hunting down Alex and wonder who that is in front of Alex. I believe that's Furkan actually. I'm not 100% sure. I could be wrong about I think, that. I think Furkan just pit. Hmm. That's strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see. Is it? That is Furkan. That is Furkan, okay. Okay, we it rewound a lap. It rewound a lap. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so we're uh, so we're just seeing uh, that previous lap from uh, Keepless' point of view as we see Furkan dive, and uh, Alex is now he takes the lead. He's got that clean air ahead of him, uh, but Keepless on the fresher tires for sure, as he's only done an out lap so far. Uh, so he's just behind Alex. He's uh, actually within DRS range. Uh, he didn't get DRS on him obviously uh, at the end of lap 18 though, because he was uh, too far back at the time. But he's really closing in on him. Just look. At at the difference, uh, the speed difference at the moment. Of course, uh, Alex pit at the end of lap 10, uh, so he's on eight lap old primes, while this is Kifla's second lap on this set of tires. He's really close, close to Alex. Bring and Alex goes defensive. Here. Holy cow. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. <laughs> I could have told you that. That was, that was uh, a, a 
brave attempt, but yeah, I, I didn't think that, I didn't expect that to work at all. Uh, Alex being very defensive on these worn tires. Um, I mean, Kifla is looking the strongest for the race win at the moment, as he's actually basically a lap up on Alex at the moment. Uh, Alex has only pit once, while Kifla has actually been into the pits twice already. Now, uh, one of Kifla's stints was an option tire stint, so that, that explains some of the uh, speed difference. Uh, but I mean, this is really strange to see from the former champion, because uh, when he dives into the pits, which is likely going to be at the end of this coming lap 20 or the lap after that and the lap 21, uh, he's going to be a solid 20 seconds behind Kifla. Yeah, Kifla seems to be a little bit in a league of his own at this point, but uh, still Umar Boyasi really close to these two. Alex still holding on to that first place, and he must be pitting this lap or the next lap. At yeah, least. absolutely. Uh, yeah, he definitely seems to be struggling as uh, Kifla does the undercut, and he's going to go around the outside of turn four, but that doesn't work. And uh, Alex is a little bit too seasoned of a driver for that. Uh, it's like it's a bit kind of like trying to pass Fernando Alonso. You're, you're going to have to get a little creative or just have some serious pace as Kifla has a, a little bit of a corner cut there. No warning or anything, but that was uh, definitely on the marginal side for sure. Um, and that's going to put him. If he got a push from behind from. Oh Marcia. yeah, he might. He might have. Uh, all this. All this uh, being held up by Al, uh, by Kifla by Alex Gillen uh, has really helped Boyasi behind. And uh, that, that may have caused a little bit of contact between Kifla and Boyasi, as uh, Alex does a great job of keeping with Kifla through turns 11 and 12 on these really worn prime tires. And look um, at that left front, just absolutely destroyed it already. And just but look still. how much later he breaks, even yeah. with the, the worn tires. It's just absolutely amazing. I'm continually impressed uh, by Alex's late braking. With, uh, for those of you that don't know, Alex does typically run 52-48 high large on the braking. Um, he, he tends to be very good at the, at the brake pedal, uh, controlling that and feathering that uh, to avoid lockup. So he, he just, he's got incredible braking power on his car um, and he just manages the lockups uh, through pure skill. Um, so it's just really impressive to see, though. Every every time, I'm just I'm just constantly impressed. And he's uh, very defensive through through turn three there. Uh, but again, uh, so Boya, uh, Boyasi, just like Kifla, is going to try the undercut. And it looks like Boyasi might actually make it work as he's managed to hang around the outside of turn five. They're going to be going side by side into turn six. Alex is the inside line, and it looks like he's just barely going to hold on to it. But for how long? Again, he's going to have the inside line as they approach turn nine. As Jack first has now uh, come up on this group and uh, he's he's going to be challenging as well uh, so it really seems like Alex is is, is just kind of dropping back as the German of Jack first uses lots of curves and he's going to move All up alongside curves. Alex just behind Boyachi yeah after draining his curves and he's going to he's going to pass Alex Gillen through turn 11 really impressive stuff and uh, let's see what he could do against Boyasi now he looks like he was scheduled to have a pit stop or a Boxing stopper in German. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, love that, that word. Yeah, yeah. boxing great stopper. word. Uh, let's see if he if he does go to the pits. Yep. No, he yeah. doesn't. He stays out. So Alex Gillen, though, is going to pit at the end of lap 21, as we predicted, on uh, d after doing 11 laps on that second prime stint. Uh, so he's got eight more laps to go. Uh, but unfortunately, the rain has not come. It hasn't even started to rain. Uh, as you can see, the, the clouds are definitely darker. It's, it's starting to look. Oh, as Jack first dives to the inside for turn three alongside Boyasi and actually gets that move done. That was amazing move from Jack first. Yeah, really, really sharp. That we was skip, imp <laughs> as we that was impressive. Uh, yeah, really impressive. And uh, we skip about five laps or so. Yep, start of lap 27, and it is raining now. Um, we, we were getting uh, getting those getting those messages about the rain coming. Uh, they were coming all throughout the race. Uh, lap 13, lap 16, lap 20. We, you know, the rain is coming. The rain is coming. And then finally, here the rain is. Uh, or it, we got three laps left, including this one, and it's not quite the tires. So, uh, I mean, this is this is the situation that every every driver wakes up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat thinking about. Uh, you got two laps left in this race your tires are destroyed do you go on the intermediates do you go on the options do you stay out what do you do and uh, this is just one of those really really tough decisions where uh, it's honestly it's partially luck 
uh, you know, I don't, I don't mean to detract from anybody who does make the right decision as far as uh, strategy is concerned, but this is just, uh, this is just going to mix things up like crazy in these final laps. And at this moment, it's whoa, as at first has a little off. Yep, he is straight off the, the course, corner and, and he is going to pit. It must be going to the inters. Uh, wonder if that's going to be the right choice because he's going to be passed by a lot of people. I think there was train of cars, maybe six cars or so coming past the pits. Just as he dove into the pits, so let's see where he he'll end up. I as don't see him in the pits yet. Yeah, he must have been. I think yeah, he's still in the points. The yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's showing that he's in eighth now. So. Okay. Yep. There Not you go. Disastrous. Nope, and, and he still does have all of lap 28 and 29, and uh, a lot of these drivers are, drivers are going to be struggling. As we see Christian in P7, and uh, he's getting a great run on Furkan Ajan here, who's in P6 in the McLaren, oh, and he's going to take to the by. inside line, and wow, wow, that is terrifying and amazing all at the same time, going through <laughs> turn 11 in the wet like that with these worn tires. Uh, that's that's really really exciting stuff and really terrifying all at the same time and uh, he, he, It looks like he's got his sights set on uh, gas and Rivero up ahead in the force India uh, Who's just behind one of the Williams there as uh, we're back on board with Alex Gillen uh, who is starting the final lap of the race is the final lap lap 29 and uh, He is now on seven lap old option tires with this rain and uh, these horrible conditions and I imagine, wow, and somehow he still manages to break at the 100 meter board. I, I just, I don't know how he does it sometimes. I really don't. <laughs> uh, but he's got Jack first just behind on, on option tires as well. Um, I, although I believe Jack first pit a lot later. Uh, yeah, yeah he, he, pit, he pit a couple laps later. Uh, uh, a couple lap, laps later, he pit on lap 23 for the options and just goes flying by Alex uh, there at turns 6 and 7. Uh, and uh, Alex is going to have to just kind of maintain the car as best he can as he's oh. gone right off the track into the gravel, through the grass, back onto the course. And uh, you can see there are three cars just behind him that are now gaining at a, at a very rapid uh, pace. Uh, you can see, look at the, the gap ahead of him is now bigger than the gap behind him as uh, Kiefle is going to round the final corner and he's going to swerve and take a dominant victory in first place. Uh, very impressive drive from Kiefle there who also won uh, the last race in Brazil. So uh, uh, Kiefle is on a, on a charge right now uh, winning yet another race as Jack first is going to come home in second place on those option tires after uh, stopping on lap 23 as Alex Gillen has another trip into that gravel trap uh, j just before the penultimate corner and everybody is just struggling Struggling through this penultimate corner, just struggling to get the power down. Christian's in third gear, fourth gear, getting wheel spin, and he's trying to catch Gaston Rivero and just can't get the power down in time. And uh, he ends up he ends up coming home in fifth place. Uh, Gaston Rivero in fourth after Alex uh, does get that final podium position. I mean, look at that though. Kiefla 29 seconds ahead of second place. Uh, just really impressive, very dominant, uh, a little bit boring from his point of view, but just really, really impressive to see. So that's a great start for the McLaren team who, who get their first win of the season. Jack First, uh, who is in a Red Bull, actually, not a Mercedes, yeah, he is going to get second place. He's going to get in second place. Uh, uh, Jack First gets second place in the Red Bull. Gaston Rivero uh, is going to be in, the, uh, in fourth place in the... Uh, uh, in the Force India, Christian Nenov in the Caterham, and uh, uh, Boyasi, unfortunately, he dropped down quite a bit in the end there, only getting sixth uh, with Fat First, who did pit for the Inters and uh, clawed his way back to seventh on that final lap there. Furkan Ajan uh, in eighth, uh, a little bit unfortunate for him. From him, he, he looked like he was looking a little bit stronger at the start of the race and might, maybe could have gotten up in the fifth, sixth, seventh range. Uh, Krama in the end gets ninth. Uh, Klawitzki in the Caterham, in the other Caterham, Caterham gets 10th, so it's a double points finish for the Caterham boys. Nice way to start their season. Uh, F1 DJ in the other Force India finishes in 11th, just outside the points and only three tenths of a second behind Klawitzki. Uh, with Eyes Amusing in the other Ferrari coming home in 12th, Mini Black in the Sauber in 13th, and Jem Bullock-Bossi in Granu in, uh, in the Mercedes cars, uh, really having an unfortunate race. They had a little bit of a coming together uh, at, at one point towards the end of the race. I do believe 
believe it was lag related um, and wasn't really anybody's fault uh, but unfortunately that destroyed any chance they had of getting any points so a little bit of an uncharacteristic finish from uh, from the Mercedes team of Gem and Granu, uh, but I expect they'll be they'll be fighting back uh, in the championship. Of course, everybody's in the order that they finish this race: Kifla, Jack first, Alex, and Gaston Rivero and Christian Nenov uh, are the top five at the moment. Um, so it, it should be a pretty interesting season. Uh, you know, in previous seasons, we we've seen Alex win in Australia or at least get second in Australia multiple times. Um, so it's it's surprising to see him all the way down in third, um, but I guess you could you could put some of that on strategy, um, with the rain coming and the way it did and all that sort of stuff. It was uh, mm -hmm. a little bit on the strange side. So in the constructors championship, McLaren is in first with Kifla's dominant victory. They have 29 points ahead of Re uh, Red Bull, uh, the t uh, team first, Fat first and Jack first. Uh, they get 24 points in second place. Ferrari in fif uh, get 15 points because of Alex's podium finish. Force India getting 12 points because of Gaston Rivero. Uh, Caterham getting 11 points from their d uh, double points finish in fifth place. Uh, with Williams in sixth at eight points, Sauber in seventh with two points, and Mercedes, the only team that's failed to score here in Australia, uh, which was definitely unfortunate, and again, uh, that should change. Uh, so I want to thank all of the drivers for racing and providing such great entertainment for everyone. Uh, check out down in the description. Uh, you guys can find links to the YouTube and Twitch pages for all the drivers who submitted footage to us. Uh, if you like watching them, you might want to go check them out. Uh, but thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you in Malaysia. We'll see you there.